This is the case of Banco Nacional de Cuba versus Sabatino. BNC versus Sabatino in 1964 was a U.S. Supreme Court case which ultimately reaffirmed that the policy of the U.S. federal courts would be to honor the active state doctrine. Basically, states' internal affairs would not be the concern of the courts in the U.S. This story begins with sugar. Barr, Whitlock & Company, American brokers, devised a contract to buy Cuban sugar from Compania Azucarera Vertientes, CAV, a corporation organized under Cuban law whose stock was owned by U.S. residents. Farr agreed to pay for the sugar after receiving confirmation for shipping documents. Shortly after, Cuba enacted a law giving the government power to nationalize the sugar company by expropriation of property, and thus CAV was expropriated. As a result, FAR entered into a contract with the Cuban government through Banco Para El Comercio de Cuba. This contract was identical to the pre-existing one with CAV. FAR assigned them the lading bills and in turn, this bank assigned these bills to the BNC. After, FAR refused the documents being presented by the bank because CAV told them that they were the rightful owners of the sugar. Sabatino, CAV's legal rep, of course agreed with this. Farr was served with a court order that appointed Sabatino the receiver of CAV's New York assets and enjoined it from moving the payments from the state. Banco Nacional, of course, disagreed with this. They believed that Sabatino should not get the proceeds. In addition, they wanted a conversion of the bills of lading and to get back their money from FAR. Banco Nacional de Cuba sued Sabatino in U.S. court to get them to hand over money for the sugar. Banco Nacional argued that the Cuban nationalization was an official act of state and should be honored by the U.S. The act of state doctrine claims that every sovereign state is bound to respect the independence of every other sovereign state and the courts will not sit in judgment of another government's acts done within its own territory. The doctrine is not required by international law, but it is a principle recognized and adhered to by the U.S. federal and state courts. The Act of State Doctrine enters consideration most often in cases where a foreign sovereign has expropriated the property of a U.S. national located in that foreign territory. Sabatino argued that the Act of State Doctrine was inappropriate for three reasons. Firstly, that the act in question was a violation of international law. Secondly, that the doctrine should not be applied unless the executive branch asks the court to do so. And finally, Cuba had brought the suit as a plaintiff and had given up its sovereign immunity. The trial court found ruling in favor for Sabatino and BNC appealed. Afterwards, the appellate court affirmed the previous decision and BNC appealed again. The final ruling through the Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court reversed the decision and found that the policy of U.S. federal courts would be to honor the act of state doctrine. The court found that the Cuban seizure did not violate international law because there was no clear international opinion that a seizure of land or property in a country by the government of that country was illegal. There was no need for the executive branch to ask the courts to apply the act of state doctrine. The act of state doctrine should always be assumed to apply due to the fact that if any court made a mistake and failed to apply it, this could hinder U.S. relations with other countries. The court found that the act of state doctrine still applied even though the state was the plaintiff. This is similar to sovereign immunity where states can sue but not be sued. Ultimately, states are powerless when it comes to the acts of state prescribed by international law. They are also powerless to refuse to adjudicate the claim founded upon a foreign law. I guess you could say this sugar left a bitter taste in the mouth of Sabatino and those who oppose the act of state.